amazing I Campus Kids friends. My name is Yancy. I'm so glad that you are here with us right now. We get to respond to God for all the amazing things that he has done and is doing in our lives. So get up on your feet wherever you are. It is time to sing the praises of our super wonderful God. Come on, clap those hands with me. Let's sing this. My God is strong. He'll do anything big or small. Nothing is impossible for a super wonderful God. Every day I can knock, God is always there for me and my family. Every day I can knock, greater is the one who lives inside. of a super wonderful God. Nicely done. Hi, iCampus kids. I'm Miss Bailey, and I'm so glad to be with you today for another great lesson straight from the Bible. As we get started today, I have a question for you. Does God keep his promises? The answer is yes. God always keeps his promises because he is faithful. What do you think the word faithful means? To be faithful means to be trustworthy or dependable. God is faithful because he is trustworthy and always does what he says that he will do. God never changes. We can depend on him to keep his promises and never fail. As we learn about a man named Abram today and how Abram obeyed God, we will also learn how God proved to be faithful to Abram and to keep his promises that he made. Let's get started. The last few weeks, we've learned that God created a good world for His glory. He made everything to show how great and wonderful He is. God made people in His own image to reflect what He is like. But when Adam and Eve disobeyed God's command, sin entered the world. People were separated from God because of their sin. Years passed and people continued to disobey God. So God sent a great flood to destroy the earth. Only Noah and his family were saved. Last week, we learned that people continued to sin and ignore God's commands. 
They tried to make a name for themselves by building a great tower. Yet God's plan was best and he confused their language so that they would be scattered all over the earth, just like he commanded. Today, we're going to learn about God's plan and a promise he made to a man named Abram. Abram came from Noah's family. He was from the family line of Shem, who was one of Noah's sons. Let's read what happened. Turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 12, and we'll start in verse 1 together. Read with me in your own Bibles or follow along on the screen. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your land, your relatives, and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse anyone who treats you with contempt, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. The Bible tells us that Abram was 75 years old when God spoke to him. He said, go from the land that you are living in now to the land that I will show you. And God gave a promise to Abram. He said, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. You will be a blessing to all the people on earth. Even though Abram didn't exactly know where to go, he trusted God and obeyed him. In the verses that follow, the Bible says that Abram took all he had and went with his wife, Sarai, and his nephew, Lot left his homeland and they set out for the land of Canaan. As they traveled from their homeland in Haran, they came to the region of Shechem. Abram built an altar to the Lord and worshiped there. From Shechem, they traveled to Bethel and Abram made an altar and worshiped God there too. Then they traveled to the Negev, which is near Egypt. Once they were in the Negev, there was a famine in the land, which means that there was no food to be found for his family. So Abram went down to Egypt to stay for a while. Let's pick up in chapter 13 to find out what happened next. Abram went up from Egypt to the Negev, he, his wife, and all he had, and lot with him. Abram was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. He went by stages from the Negev to Bethel, to the place between Bethel and Ai, where his tent had formerly been, to the site where he had built the altar. And Abram called on the name of the Lord there. Now Lot, who was traveling with Abram, also had flocks, herds, and tents. But the land was unable to support them as long as they stayed there, for they had so many possessions that they could not stay together. Abram and Lot ran into a problem. They had too many people and livestock to live all in one place. The Bible tells us that Abram and Lot separated and set up their tents in opposite lands. Lot chose the land in the east near Jordan, and Abram chose the land of Canaan. After they had separated, God reminded Abram of the promise that he had made. Let's read it together. After Lot had separated from him, the Lord said to Abram, Look from the place where you are. Look north and south, east and west. For I will give you and your offspring forever all the land that you see. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust of the earth, then your offspring could be counted. Get up and walk around the land through its length and width, for I will give it to you. So Abram moved his tent and went to live near the oaks of Mamre at Hebron, where he built an altar to the Lord. God promised that this land, the land of Canaan, would be Abram's new home and would belong to his family forever. He promised there would be so many people in Abram's family, they couldn't even be counted. Abram believed God's words and obeyed God. God is faithful to always keep his promises. Next week, we're going to learn that God made a very special promise with Abram called a covenant, and we're going to learn what that means. The books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Ruth, 
2 Samuel, and Matthew all include people from Abram's family. God was faithful to keep his promise to Abram. Even Jesus came from Abram's family line. God was right when he said the whole world would be blessed through Abram because anyone who trusts in Jesus becomes a part of God's family forever. As we wrap up today, let's play a game of true or false. If what I say is true, put your thumbs up. If what I say is false, give me a thumbs down. Are you ready? Lot was Abram's nephew. That's true, thumbs up. Abram obeyed God. That's true too, he did. God promised to give Abram the land of Egypt. That's false, thumbs down. Do you remember the land that God promised to Abram? You're right, it's Canaan. God chose to bless the whole world through Abram's family. That's true, good job. Lot and Abram did not separate. That's false, they did separate. Great listening today, boys and girls. God was faithful to Abram to keep his promise and helped him get to the new land where God would bless his family. Like Abram, we can trust God no matter what we face or where he leads us. God's plans are always for our good and God is worthy of our trust and obedience. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for always keeping your promises. You are faithful. Help us to trust and obey you this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us today on iCampus Kids. We'll see you next week. Mac, what are you doing? I'm waiting on a call from God. On, on the phone? Yep. I don't, I don't, I don't think that that's. <gasps> Look, the agents are here. Oh, okay. We can talk more about this later. Welcome, Welcome back, back iCampus Campus Kids. Kids. I'm Matilda. You can call me Chili for short. And I'm Mackenzie, Mac for short. We're on mission to share Jesus with our friends, our family, and the whole world. We're so glad to have you back. Here at headquarters, we love learning all about God and finding new ways to share him with others. Our mission is to tell everyone that Jesus came to earth as a human, lived a perfect life, died for our sins. That's all the things that we do to break God's rules. And came back to life. We're so excited to see you. Every day, we will be finding good news clues and looking at different parts of the salvation story. Today's good news clue is from Genesis 11 through 13. It shows us that God keeps his promises because he is faithful. <gasps> is that my call from God? Hello? Oh, yeah, yeah, she's here. Okay, I'll ask her. Yeah, no problem. Okay, you too. Bye. It wasn't God. Yeah, Mac, God doesn't call people on the phone. But we learned in Sunday school this week that Abraham answered God's call. Not that kind of call, silly. Do you know when your mom is in the other room and she calls your name? Yeah, she does that when she needs to get my attention or she wants me to do something. Exactly. That's the kind of call that Abraham got from God. Oh, so not a phone call? Nope, not a phone call. The phone wasn't even invented until 1875. Oh, that's right. We learned about that in history class. So who was the call from then? Oh yeah, that was from Michelle. She, uh, she wanted to know who ordered 15 buckets of white paint. What did you tell her? That I would have you call her. Mac, aren't you the one who ordered and used all of that paint? Yep, and you can tell her that when you call her back later. All right, agents, come back next week for more from us here at the iCampus Kids Clubhouse. And remember our mission, tell everyone about Jesus. Bye. Bye.
Hey, boys and girls, it is so good to see you again today on iCampus Kids. We hope you've had a great time listening to Miss Bailey, hanging out with Mac and Tilly, and singing with Yancey. Today in our lesson, we learn how Abraham followed God even when it was really hard. God kept his promise to Abraham by sending Jesus to be the savior of the world. And we know that God always keeps his promises and we can always trust in him. That's right, Miss Ashley. You know, we might not always know where God is going to lead us, but we do know that he will always keep his promises never to leave us because he knows what is best for us. That's right. Today we're gonna to play another game and we need your help. So we have three cups here and we're going to pick one of, underneath one of these cups, there is a bouncy ball. Your job is to follow it and make sure that once we're done mixing them up, you can pick out the right cup. Okay? All okay. right. Which one you ready? did you put the ball under? Do you remember? Am I supposed to say? Yeah, because they need to know where to start. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know it's right here. Okay. And what color? Oh, oh there. all right. So we've it's got a red, a ball. red ball under that cup. All right. You okay. Come up. Yeah. You go ready? Forth. I'll watch. You go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so there is something a little. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> bit easy. All right, so do you All want right. to mix them up this time? All right, sounds good. Okay, okay, so we'll start here. It's in the middle. Okay. I'll mix it up and we'll see if we can find it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, there's okay. a little surprise in there. If you watch yeah. closely, you might pick up on what's happening. It's funny. But you have to be very observant. All right. Okay. Okay, you ready? You know? I, I think I know. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure it's this one. All right. Yes. You did it. Yes. So, so you know how I knew? So <laughs> did you see that? Watch. Watch what this is. It kind of see moves that? by itself. It does. It rolls under the cup and the cup's so light, it'll it move it a little bit. So that's the trick. You watch for the moving cup. Okay. So we have three you more. You make it harder? And a blue ball. Let's see. Okay, good. You mix one half, I'll mix the other, and we'll see Sounds if we can good. find both. Okay. Bouncy balls. Okay, I'm gonna put mine under the middle to okay. start. Where's yours to start? Uh, In that one? Right there. Okay, yeah. all right, here we go. Are you ready? ready? Okay. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they can watch both of them at the same time. <laughs> that would be the tricky part. <laughs> I love it. You kind of have to watch for that little tricky. Okay, all right. All right, I think thing. I'm good. Okay, so. You need to pick from mine and I don't pick from yours. I didn't look at your <laughs> point. Okay, I'm gonna pick this one. Oh. Okay. This one? Oh no! <laughs> Third time's a charm. Okay, you got it. Okay. okay. All right. All right, so I'm gonna try this one. <laughs> this harder when you're not watching. <laughs> to be honest, I don't remember. Yes! Oh, that is so good. That was by chance. So yeah. good. All right. So good. So fun. Yep. So okay, fun. that's a fun game. Good job, everybody. Love Thank it. you for playing with us today. I hope you've enjoyed our game. <laughs> See you next week on iCampus Kids. Yes, Abraham was someone who truly knew how to follow God with everything. It didn't matter the cost. It didn't matter the sacrifice. Abraham chose to follow God, and I want to be like that. Today, as we sing, let's lay down our distractions. Let's lay down our worry, our fear, whatever consumes us. Let's put our trust in God and follow him. Let him turn it in your favor. Watch him work it for your good. He's not done with what he started. He's not done until it's good. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. Hello, strength. Hello, hope. It's a new horizon. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. Hello, strength. Hello, hope. It's a new horizon. If you're 
that we've got all our heart all our soul all our mind we look to you today god come on sing this she fear is not my future you are you are sickness is not my story you are you are heartbreak's not my Help us to follow you with everything that we have.